Okay, so completing the square. Sometimes it's useful to be able to write our quadratics in a different format. So we're used to seeing them as x squared, x, and then a number. But sometimes it's helpful to write it in this format here, x plus a number, all squared, plus or minus another number. So we have two different types, one that is x squared plus, and one that will be x squared minus. So to do this, we add on half the coefficient remember coefficient is the number in front of a letter so i'll add on half the coefficient of x and then take it away again so we're adding on the same number that we're taking away so that keeps the equation the same but this part of the equation then we can write as x plus 4 all squared so our x comes from here our 4 comes from here and it's all squared so if we squared out that bracket we would get back up to here. We've got minus 4 squared, so it's minus 16. Now it's subtract 4 squared. It's not minus 4 all squared, so be careful of that. So it's minus 4 squared minus 5. So we can write that as x plus 4 all squared minus 21. Okay, our second one then, x squared minus 9x plus 2. We do this in exactly the same way. There's only just one minor change. So it's x squared minus 9x plus half the coefficient of x squared and then take it away again. So we get x squared minus 9x plus 9 over 2 squared minus 9 over 2 squared plus 2. We can write this first bit here as x this time minus 9 over 2 squared. And we work out the rest of it. So that's minus 81 over 4 plus 2. So minus 81 over 4 plus 2. It gives you minus... 73 over 4 so just slightly more awkward numbers than in the second one so if it's a plus here it'll be a plus here if it's a minus here it will be a minus here okay our second part then is solving by completing the square now in an exam if it says solve the following by completing the square and you solve it by the quadratic formula or by factorizing if you can you'll not get the marks. So if it, the question tells you to solve by completing the square, then you have to use completing the square. So our first one, x squared minus 10x. Remember, add on half the coefficient squared, take it away again. This part here becomes x minus 5 all squared minus 25 minus 4. So this is the same as the first lot and we get x minus 5 all squared minus 29 equals naught. So I'm going to bring the 29 across to the other side. I'm going to take the square root of either side which means we'll lose the squared here. And remember when you take the square root of something it should be a plus or minus for your answer. And then we're going to take our minus 5 over and make it a plus 5. So we can write our answers as 5 plus and minus the root of 29. And you don't have to simplify it any more than that. Okay, so our next one, x squared plus 7x plus 1 equals 0. So we get x squared plus 7x plus 7 over 2 squared minus 7 over 2 squared plus 1 equals 0. So we can write that as x plus 7 over 2 squared minus 49 over 4 plus 1 equals 0. So that becomes x plus 7 over 2 squared minus 45 over 4 equals 0. 
I'm going to then take this across to the other side and it becomes 45 over 4. Take the square root of both sides and we get plus or minus the square root of 45 over 4. Now we can't do anything with the square root of 45 but the square root of 4 we can figure out is 2 so we can write that as x plus 7 over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 45 over 2 then I'm going to bring the plus 7 over 2 across and it becomes minus 7 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 45 over 2 and just to make it look a bit nicer and to tidy it up so obviously 2 is our common denominator we can write it as minus 7 plus or minus root 45 over 2